Good evening on this Tuesday, the 20th of December. This is your 28storms.com cyclone update. The latest tropical cyclone outlook out of Darwin, Australia suggests that there is a high chance of cyclone formation by Friday. And the western region is also acknowledging this possibility, but they believe that this low will remain just toward the east of their area of responsibility. But they are not ruling out the possibility of this low still turning a little bit more toward the west as we go into the upcoming weekend. Meanwhile, the disturbed area of weather in the Coral Sea is still being given a high chance of development through Wednesday. To the contrary, the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center product for the next 24 hours is only giving the disturbed area of weather in the Coral Sea a low chance of cyclone classification, and they do not foresee any threat of cyclone development near Darwin, at least over the next day or so. And finally, toward the latter half of today's video, we are going to quickly review the possibility of medium range development in the northern Indian Ocean. All of this cyclone activity is in response to the active pulse of the Madden Julian Oscillation beginning to make a comeback over the maritime continent and Indian Ocean, and it looks as though the convective activity will remain above normal for at least the next week. So as we start off with the system located toward the southeast of Papua New Guinea over the Coral Sea, there really still isn't much in the way of any significant organization, but if anything, there has been a slight increase in the concentration of convection compared to 24 hours ago. And perhaps you can see this a little better on the visible and eventually the infrared satellite once we begin to lose some of our daytime visibility. But here is the area of low pressure beginning to get its act together, so this is certainly some improvement from 24 hours ago as stated just a moment prior to this and the latest color infrared shows that we really don't have much in the way of significant cold cloud tops developing near that low pressure center just yet but there is obviously a very significant cloud canopy along with some moderate to heavy precipitation heading toward the southeast in the general direction of New Caledonia so we have some active weather ahead for residents along New Caledonia and the water vapor shows an increasingly defluent pattern over this area of low pressure so it looks as though conditions will be marginally favorable for some additional slow development over the next 24 hours. And then as the system begins to sink below 20 degrees south latitude, it will start to encounter much more in the way of westerly winds aloft along with cooler water temperatures and significant weakening will quickly commence thereafter. So just to recap, any cyclone development in the Coral Sea will be relatively short-lived and the impacts along the Queensland coast will be very minimal as the center of circulation will remain well offshore and the main threat will be some heavy rainfall within New Caledonia. Now as we switch over to the disturbance that is now pushing out of the Gulf of Carpentaria and inching a little bit closer toward the Arafura Sea, we still don't really see a well-defined area of circulation or low pressure and it will more than likely take at least an additional 48 hours for this system to begin to get its act together and we see the relatively same setup here on the standard infrared as we just saw with the visible and the latest enhanced infrared shows quite a lot of intense convection but there's really no organization or concentration to it and as we turn on the water vapor you still get the picture that we have some moderate easterly wind shear aloft so conditions aren't perfectly favorable for development just yet Meanwhile, if we go back to a regional perspective using the latest low-level vorticity analysis, the vorticity max associated with the disturbance in the Coral Sea has become a lot better concentrated and defined compared to yesterday. So if this system is going to attain cyclone classification, it very well could do so within the next 12 to 24 hours before conditions become a little bit more hostile. And the weather near the top end certainly isn't very organized just yet. And as stated before, it's more than likely going to take at least another 24 to 48 hours for it to get its act together. As we take a look at the latest wind shear pattern in the mid to upper levels, we see that mid to upper level ridging is dominating much of the Gulf region. But just toward the north, we do see some easterly wind shear. But all of the models show this easterly shear beginning to relax over the next three to four days. And that is the main reason why we are concerned about cyclone development in the Arafura Sea. The following is the latest 200 to 850 HPA vertical shear forecast from the GFS model and the current initialization shows that much of the shear is located over the central and southern portions of the Coral Sea westward into interior Australia with the favorable light upper level winds located near the top end and we do notice that there is a small core of upper level ridging with the 
associated shear just toward the north, but this upper level ridging is forecast to advance more toward the Arafura Sea, especially as we get into 72 hours. And this is a very favorable pattern once we get into day three with that upper level ridge located directly over the tropical disturbance. Meanwhile, the system in the Coral Sea is forecast to continue moving toward the southeast into this rather extreme shear zone. So we are not overly concerned about a significant tropical cyclone impacting New Caledonia. So with that said, here is a more detailed look at what the GFS is forecasting near the surface. And as we go into 72 hours, what is left of the Coral Sea Cyclone is passing between New Caledonia and Queensland, so no direct impacts are expected. Again, mainly just some heavy rainfall from some of the outer bands. But notice here, just toward the north of Darwin, that is the general timing where we expect the system in the Arafura Sea to really begin to intensify. And then the main question will become, what is going to happen beyond the Day 3 time frame? And unfortunately, it still may take an additional day or so for us to really be able to answer that question. As of right now, there is still quite a lot of model disagreement. And with each new model cycle, the models appear to present us with a different type of model forecast. But this current solution from the GFS is showing the system being nearly stationary near the top end for several days. And that will allow the system to intensify as long as the center of circulation remains just off the coastline but even that part of the forecast is a bit difficult to determine and the main threat will be some heavy rainfall especially if the center begins to push a little bit more toward the south and that is exactly what the GFS is showing as we go into days five and day six so heavy rainfall remains the main concern as of right now with regard to this system primarily for areas surrounding and located in Darwin and then as we go into the extended range beyond day seven the latest GFS forecast is taking the system back into the Gulf of Carpentaria and then it begins to re-intensify as it re-emerges over the open waters. But again, this is a highly volatile forecast and a lot remains to be seen. Furthermore, the latest run from the ECMWF is also not very consistent with the forecast that we saw from this model at this time yesterday. But it is somewhat similar to the GFS with a couple key differences. So let's just go ahead and take a look at things as we go into 24, 48, and 72 hours. We don't really see much in the way of any development north of Darwin until we get into around day three. And then development really begins to take off as we get into day five and day six. But notice the European model was showing a little bit more in the way of a westerly track before we see it turn back toward the south near day seven. And therefore, once we do finally see that southerly turn by day eight, the cyclone makes landfall much closer to Broome, but still a bit toward the northeast over the Kimberley coast. And as we go into day 9 and day 10, it is making that turn back toward the east, but it's well toward the south, unlike the GFS that headed over the Gulf at this time. However, to make matters even worse, this is the day 7 European Ensemble average forecast, and it looks as though half of the ensembles are still taking the system more toward the west over the open waters of the southeast Indian Ocean. While we still have a couple models, as suggested by the GFS, that take the system back into the Gulf. So there is a wide range of forecast possibilities that remain with this system, and the forecast confidence beyond days three through five really isn't all there just yet. In terms of the mid level steering factors, as we look into the 48 hour ECMWF forecast for the mid levels, we still see the powerful 588 decameter ridge dominating the weather across Western Australia. And if the cyclone is developing a little bit more than we anticipate by this time, then it will begin to take advantage of the easterly flow on the north side of this ridge, which will promote more of a westerly track. But then as we go into the six day forecast, this ridge is beginning to break down. And as a result, as we head into day eight, this is going to allow the system to turn more toward the south as we see more in the way of troughing. So literally all residents living from the coast of Western Australia eastward through the peninsula should still keep an eye on the weather as the forecast for this tropical low could still change quite a lot over the coming week. But as of right now, the main threat will still be the risk of heavy rainfall near the top end. And of course, we'll certainly just have to closely monitor the intensity of this cyclone as it begins to strengthen, especially if that center remains offshore and has more room to work with. And really quickly, I just wanted to point out that along with that active pulse of the Madden Julian Oscillation spreading through the Indian Ocean and Maritime Continent, we're also beginning to see an increase in convection over the northern Indian Ocean. 
and this region will be monitored very closely for development, especially in the medium range. The good news is that as of right now, the easterly winds in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere is not conducive for tropical cyclone formation, but some of the dynamical forecast models are beginning to lower the surface pressures between days 3 and 7. As a matter of fact, this is the latest ensemble average from the ECMWF for day 7, and basically what this tells us is that the European ensembles do suggest at least some disturbed weather is going to inch closer towards Sri Lanka and the Southeast Indian Ocean in the medium range. There's certainly not quite enough evidence to suggest that we will be dealing with a tropical cyclone or anything of the sort just yet, but at the very least it looks as though some heavy rainfall could be working its way back into the region. So thanks again for viewing the latest tropical weather video update from 28storms.com slash cyclone. Once we do get some classified systems near Australia, we will be adding more real-time content to the website so that 28storms.com can be a one-stop source for all the information that is available to viewers on the internet. So thanks again, and we will have another video update by this time tomorrow.